Is the golden age of landscape-inspired art long past? Who is going to be the next Ansel Adams or Thomas Moran for our national parks? Find out this time on Regenerative Road Trip. Hi, I'm Jason Gray, and this is Regenerative Road Trip. If you're a national parks buff at all, you're going to recognize the pictures of Ansel Adams or the paintings of Thomas Moran. But even if you don't know the names, the images are going to be familiar. Or maybe those really cool advertising posters that were done in the 1930s by the artists working for the WPA's Federal Art Project. But these are all from the late 1800s through the 1930s. Is the golden age of landscape art for the national parks over? Are we nowadays only ever going to see our country's landscapes through the lens of Instagram pics? The answer is thankfully no. At many national park sites around the country and uh, right here at our current stop on the regenerative road trip, Agate Fossil Beds National Monument in the Panhandle of Nebraska, artists of all mediums are continuing that art heritage. Not just photographers like Adams or painters like Moran, but musicians, weavers, quilters, writers, and poets. For the artist, the park, and the community, it's very high yield. I think the parks really understand the visual arts. Ansel Adams, the light in Yosemite, right? That in a way, the selling of the parks and the protection of the parks to the public depends on visual imagery. I just, I know that there's, um, that writers can do something similar and so can composers and dancers and choreographers and that I know the parks are open to other kinds of art. Since I've been in the national parks for over 20 years, I've uh, always encountered artists and residents, whether it's poetry or a cartoon or a piece of music. Uh, they all help enhance what parks are to visitors. And I kept saying, I, I don't want to go so fast. I just want to sit with a cup of coffee and stare at this environment. Be in the park from a creative viewpoint is a really special thing. You're not sightseeing. These artists have spent two to three weeks to even several months in these national parks. Everglades was the first. People in my extended family kept calling me and saying, are there alligators? <laughs> and I was like, yes, there's alligators, but not right here in the Park Service house. In Petrified Forest, I got taken, you know, out into the back country and I saw things that I just never would have seen. Artistic pursuit or having a muse is a relationship. And like any relationship, if you're good, to it, it will be good to you. So there's something about taking this two weeks, it just creates vision to have been someplace that's this peaceful and in its own way desolate and very beautiful in its details and imaginatively um, very strong. I think what it does is it, it builds up the ability to continue to search and seek and see and express. We also like to see things that are different or go beyond the surface. One of my favorite uh, pieces is uh, textile art. She um, quilted uh, this landscape and highlighted our night sky. That's something that a lot of people don't get to see because they don't live here uh, and they can't camp here either. So to have that revealed uh, reminds, hey, there's something to be said about the, the wide open space here. The idea is for the artist to reinterpret uh, landscape and uh, certainly that idea of interpretation or how one perceives those is going to help inform the artist on what they're going to produce. Through these reinterpretations, it's easier for visitors and park employees to see the park in many different ways or a new way. 
but sometimes they have these really unusual interpretations that are whimsical or, or starkly different from a mainstream visitor might see. It's really refreshing to have that uh, new perspective and a fresh perspective. Um, we had about 70 kids come through and I, I taught um, something called weathergrams. That's where you marble paper and then you write various messages to the environment, things that shift your perception. But what I really liked about it is that it was an integration of art into science. So certainly people are aware of STEM, they say science, technology, uh, engineering, and math. Uh, but you, you, taking that to the next step, it's the STEAM uh, initiative, and that's the, the science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Tara Lynn and I have been to our fair share of national parks, and we never knew this program existed. But now that we do, we're starting to remember some interesting paintings and photography and other forms of art that have been in the visitor centers of the various national parks we've visited, many of which could possibly have never occurred, never been put up if it wasn't for the Artist in Residence program. You know what else may never happen? More episodes of Regenerative Road Trip and Travis Finds Out if it wasn't for the support of our Patreon members. How's that for a segue? So go to patreon.com slash regenroadtrip to show your support. So they're not just letting anyone hang out in the National Park Ranger housing and do all these cool backcountry experiences, right? So let's say you're an artist, a painter, a poet, a songwriter, or a prose writer. What's the park looking for, and how do you get in? Essentially, I get up, and I'll go to my notebook, and I'll just I'll work for as long as I can for a few hours in the morning. One of the foresters said, I don't understand why you writers aren't like hiking around more <laughs> and, and it's a it's a conflict wherever i am i'm in conflict i feel i should be writing and yet you know my boot heels want to be wandering i'm curious about where i am so it's it's an intense it's an incubator i mean it's intense we have uh, in the past we've had a uh, um, hundred oh, close to a hundred people applying every year it is very competitive. For anybody who's interested in applying, I would say to actually know the park, you know, persistence, which is to say maybe you have to apply 10 places to get one. What um, we look for are uh, people who are willing to share their art, that they're willing to share their techniques or their uh, past art. I'm working on a piece for the park and I think I've got it. I think I've got a poem that can communicate to the public what one person's sort of vision is of being here, but it also synthesizes a little bit of what other people have seen. But I've written a lot. I've written maybe 20, 25 poems. So I'm always aiming to communicate, you know, with an audience, give readings, talk about the experience. I mean, the kind of ambassadorship goes on after the residency. If you see something different, you'll, it'll catch your attention. If it catches your attention, maybe you'll see the uniqueness, the specialness of it. If you do that, maybe you'll want to save and preserve these special places. Mm -hmm.